Hi, welcome to another RHC series video. In this one, we'll look at Firewall D. Okay, let's have a look at the objectives first. So, use Firewall D and associated mechanisms such as which rules, zones, and custom rules to implement packet filtering and configure uh, network address translation. Okay, so we'll look at the basics of uh, Firewall D first, uh, and then we'll look at some more complex uh, rules uh, uh, known as rich rules, and then we'll look at uh, creating our own custom rules as well okay so let's get started uh, this is server1.example.com uh, first thing you want to make sure is that firewall d is started and enabled so you can use systemctl uh, status firewall d okay in our case it is running and it is enabled uh, if it's not in your case, then use systemctl to enable it and also start it. If you run for, uh, the command that we use is firewall cmd that show that is used to create the rules and reload settings, etc. So if you run dash dash help, I show you a variety of commands that are available. Um, one of the first ones you should use is dash dash state that shows you if the firewall D is running and uh, the other command to that you can use as well is um, get and there's various things you can do get zone or default zone will show you which is the active zone so if we create a rule without uh, specifying this is where it's going to add it uh, in our case it's public um, if you also do file dash cmd uh, get active zone this shows you all the um, interfaces that are assigned to that zone. So pretty much everything for us is assigned to public. There are uh, obviously loads of other zones available as well. So I don't expect this to come up in the exam. Um, but if it does, I uh, just know how to do it. Uh, I won't cover it here to be honest. Um, Let's have a look at the man page or any resources online. Uh, the other command is firewall-cmd list. So if you do list all zones, that show you all the built-in zones that are available. Uh, so you can see from here, public is the only one with any interfaces attached to it. Have a quick look at the uh, man page as well. Um, just familiarize yourself with that. I'll don't expect um, anything too difficult in the exam to be honest okay so let's um, create a uh, rule so if you do a get services that shows you all the built-in services that are available uh, it's got all the popular and default ones so if you want to add, um, or if you want to allow a service through the firewall, that's firewall-cmd, add-service, and then the name of the service. So let's try HTTP. Actually, we already have HTTP, so let's try uh, NFS. Okay, and that adds it straight away to the running config. Now if you want that to also be persistence so that is if you reload the file to be there for the rule to be there as well then you need to specify dash dash permanent so without uh, specifying dash dash permanent it adds it to running config if you do dash dash permanent it runs uh, adds it to um, stored config if you do a firewall dash cmd dash dash list all that shows you all, pretty much everything really the interfaces the services if you got any port forwarding uh, if you got any rich rules so if the default services don't cover a particular port you can add your own port in so that's firewall dash cmd dash dash add port and then you also need to specify what protocol it is so either tcp or udp again you need to if you want it to be a persistent or permanent rule then you need to specify dash dash permanent
the um, other thing that you can add um, to the basic rules is a uh, port forward. So that's file dash cmd dash dash add dash forward dash port equals and then port equals the port number and then you separate that with a colon and you specify protocol that's proto equals so we'll do tcp and colon again and then you specify the destination port so let's forward to port 22 which is uh, ssh uh, okay what's going on here okay so two port equals not two port colon there you go um, so that's added that in and then we can just do dash dash permanent so it's in the permanent config as well okay so if we do a uh, list all again we should be able to see so there we go so we got our rule we got our port and then we got our port forward okay so I just want to show you um, what happens if you add a rule um, and don't specify dash dash permanent and then reload firewall D so okay so let's do firewall dash cmd and then we'll add a service let's add uh, samba So if we do a uh, list all, um, we can see that Samba is there in the uh, active config. Now if we do a reload, this reads the save content, or save configuration I should say. So now if you do a, uh, a firewall-cmd uh, list all, You see all the ones that we specified permanent is there. However, some by one as we didn't specify permanent, it has now disappeared. So if you want a rule to be active straight away, uh, don't specify permanent. If you want it to be uh, stored in the configuration, then specify permanent. Okay, to remove um, services or ports, um, you do firewall dash cmd and then remove service. Um, uh, so that will remove it from the running config if you do dash dash permanent it will remove it from the stored config uh, same with port as well so dash dash remove uh, dash port uh, equals one two three four slash tcp and then same again must specify permanent and uh, the same for port forward as well so file dash cmd dash dash uh, remove forward port actually before we remove the port um, let's uh, Let's test it actually. So let's not uh, remove the port. If we uh, switch to server 2, and then if we SSH to server 1, but specify uh, port. One two three four. Then, if our port forward is working, we should go straight in. Okay, there you go. So that is working. Let's go back to server one. Okay, let's uh, remove the uh, port forward. So remove forward port. 
equals port one two three four one colon protocol proto equals TCP colon two port equals uh, twenty two and then just uh, do the same with permanent so remove it from the stored config okay let's uh, test again now that we've removed the uh, port forward yeah there you go it doesn't work anymore okay so now let's have a look at uh, reach rules so these are more complex rules so the man page for this is uh, firewall d dot rich language again if you uh, scroll towards the bottom you'll see there's quite a few examples um, that you can use so you don't have to remember this so there we go so you can specify source address you need to specify the rule family so if it's ipv4 or ipv6 um, so yeah, you can make them a bit more complex but yeah have a look at the examples before the exam and just familiarize yourself with these okay so let's create a rich rule so firewall dash cmd let's do a list all okay so we haven't got any rich rules at the moment So add rich rule and then single quote rule family first. So in our case we'll do an IPv4. So quote IPv4. And then let's specify source address as server two. So uh, ten dot ten dot ten dot one four eight and then we want to specify a service name so service name equals let's do ssh and then we want to specify the action and we'll say reject okay so any connection to port 22 from server 2 um, shouldn't work now okay. and let's also add this to our uh, permanent config and then if we do a list all that should show us okay so there you go so it's set to reject from 10 10, 10 1, 4, 8. so as I say should not work now let's test it So it's not working. Okay, so let's uh, test um, accept rule. So if we, yeah, so we're going to remove the SSH rule from the general rule, for the basic rule. We'll, uh, let's also remove the rich rule as well. So again, to remove a rich rule, is firewall dash cmd dash dash remove dash rich rule and then same as that specify the uh, rule family the source address um, the service name just have a look at the reach rules after you do a list all and you just need to put the exact same settings in so you'll remove that particular rule okay let's do the permanent as well And we will this time we'll add the rich rule to um, accept SSH connection from uh, server two.
service name equals SSH, um, double quote SSH, and then action is accept, and then close that with a single quote. Do the permanent. Okay, so let's do a list all. So you now notice that SSH is not in our general rule or basic rule, but it should be accepting connection from server 2. So let's just give that a quick test. Yep, that's fine, that's working okay as expected. Okay, so let's go back to server 1. So all the um, built-in rules are uh, defined and stored in XML files in user lib by Wolf D services. Um, so if you wanted to create your own custom rule, copy a file from here. Uh, I'd suggest SSH file. That's probably one of the simplest one. And then you need to copy it to etc uh, firewall d services and then give it a name. So let's call r1 it fountain dot xml. Okay, and then let's edit this file. Okay, so here it is. So change the name here in un, uh, under short. Now there's a little description as well. We can change this as well. So uh, let's uh, delete all of these out. Okay. IT fountain test rule and then you specify a protocol and port so let's keep the protocol and change the port to I don't know anything 1122 that's fine and then you need to do a firewall cmd dash dash reload and that will read all the rules again And so now if we uh, list all our services, so that's uh, firewall-cmd, list services, uh, we want to do, actually that shows you active services, we want to do get services. And here we go. There is a IT fountain there. So that's how you uh, make your own custom rules. Okay, and that concludes the video for Firewall D. Uh, I thank you for watching, and I hope you found it useful. There are some contact details on the screen. Um, drop me a line if you have any questions or suggestions.